welcome to my channel. My name is Misty. Today's video is going to be me having you go along with me as I lesson plan my bird unit all over again. If you're wondering why I am replanning my bird unit, then I will link that video up here. But before we get into the why and how, make sure that you hit the subscribe button for more content just like this, everything homeschool on this channel. And the like button lets me know that this is the type of video you enjoy so I know what to make for you in the future. So if you'd like more lesson planning videos, make sure you hit that button. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. So first, excuse my voice. It is really, really early in the morning, so I'm still waking up technically. But to quickly share why we are redoing this bird unit, it's because the curriculum I was using is not working for us. To be honest, I'm a little burnt out on birds and the whole bird idea, but my daughter really wants to learn about birds, so I'm going to throw together a quick unit study week by week. I think we're going to probably do about four weeks. We'll see by the end of this video. So first I would like to say everything that was in my video on lesson planning like around a curriculum, which I don't like saying I'll link videos 20 times, but I'll link that up here too because all of this is connected. But I still have the same ideas, right? I still want to um, work on the same projects and the same crafts. All of that is staying the same. So now it's just piecing everything together. So the three main books I'm going to use for this lesson plan I decided are Feathers Not Just for Flying. I'll link these down below for you to purchase on Amazon too if you would like. A Nest is Noisy and An Egg is Quiet. Both of these are written by Diana Hutz Aston and Sylvia Long. And I have my lesson plan out where I'm going to write everything down. Hopefully I can get this camera situation figured out so you guys can follow along as I do it. Okay, so I have my camera set up here. You're gonna kind of see it, but hopefully in the future I have a better setup. I did not think this through. I'm probably going to need some new equipment to properly do this better, but let's go ahead and get started. So first, uh, we do school Monday through Thursday for a lot of the actual curriculum, and then Friday is like a fun day. Sometimes I switch it up on which day is the fun day, but generally that's how it goes. So I'm going to plan Monday through Thursday really quick. Monday is the 14th, 9, 14, 9, 15, 9, 16, and 9, 17. Okay, so I have the dates written down. Now here's the thing about our lesson plan. We always start with circle time, so I'm just going to write circle time and have an arrow pointing to show that's what we are doing. Okay, so circle time, because it's the beginning of the year, we're not doing anything special during it, but as the year progresses, obviously our circle time will um, but like I was saying um, before my camera fell, circle time, we're not doing anything special because uh, there's no need to yet. It's still the beginning of the year technically. So as time progresses, our circle time will evolve. After circle time, we go straight into what I consider the most important for learning and also the one that has the heaviest curriculum. We're using the best energy of the day and when we're most alert to get this out of the way. So the first thing we do is reading and math. So I type, I always write AAR because she does all about reading and any curriculum books I mentioned, everything will be linked down, down below if I can find the information for you guys in case you wanna check it out. But we do all about reading and we do 20 minutes. We do not go beyond 20 minutes, not often, because, you know, that's the attention span recommended in the curriculum as well as in real life. That is about the attention span of a child her age. Um, Viviana is five, almost six. So we'll do our reading curriculum. And the good thing is I don't have to lesson plan that. It's kind of open and go. It has everything I need. So all I have to do for that is make sure that I read up on it before we start so I know what we're getting into. And then her math that we do is Matthew C, which I just write M-U-S and we continue that throughout the week as well. Now granted, I do change it up. Sometimes she's bored and I think we are actually are going to change our school format. So if I don't do math, you see the actual um, curriculum that day, then we still do a math activity, but it's done uh, with play. So she'll be doing things with blocks or things like that to do her math. Okay, so week one, we are working on, and I'm gonna write it pretty big here. Week one is going to be all about a bird's nest and habitat. So I'm going to write nest and <laughs> nest and habitat. Told you guys, bad handwriting. Kept wanting to write lowercase and uppercase, lowercase and uppercase. And so obviously the important thing would be a nest is noisy. So what we would do is break up the pages during that time. So I'm going to go through and see how many pages there are. Sixteen. So sixteen divided by four obviously means we will read four pages a day of that book. Nest 
is noisy and you will read four pages each day. Now we know we're reading four pages a day. And also there will be another book that we will get into. Another book we're getting into is The Magic and Mysteries of Trees. And it has a lot to do with bird habitats, obviously. So we will add in just a little bit of learning about trees. If you ever want to do an actual curriculum and build your own curriculum on trees, this book I highly recommend. So the way I would do this, this doesn't need to be written down necessarily, but the way I would do this is we would go in and we would find parts where they connect with the trees. So there's a part that says living together. I'm sure they touch on trees. So I would go in and look at that. For the sake of this video, I'm not gonna do it here just because my camera will die before we get there. Tree homes is another thing to cover. It did have one that said animals and their, like how they assist, animal assistance. So those are all things that we would go in here and look at I would mark those pages and we would read them on one of the days we decide to cover trees now the very first day we're actually going to cover nests and I have an actual activity and that is to uh, build a bird nest okay so building the bird nest is uh, creating a play-doh bird nest and so we go outside get things from nature and there's an, a recipe I have to build this specific play-doh and we would use things from outside just like birds would and build the two together and while we're doing that I will either find interesting facts about a bird's nest or I will find a video that discusses bird's nests and I would play that or talk about that at the same time so I'm not sure which one I want to do yet that's just something that requires a little more research after I finish building the lesson plan so I think that now that we've built the bird nest on day one and we've talked about it a little bit I think day two would be a great day to introduce the trees so I'm gonna write tree book and the tree book is obviously the one that we've been talking about and we're going to create an activity and I think here's what I want to do because fall is here guys um, it's still a green trees but the leaves are starting to fall so I think what we'll do is build a tree to build a tree craft and the way this looks is I'm going to create a tree trunk and something to connect the leaves through so I would create like little pinholes for them to um, so we're also working on fine motor guys but they would take the leaves and loop it into the holes of the tree trunk and then they are going to build a tree around the pre-built tree trunk so I think that's going to be really fun for them and then I'll also create create tiny little nests that they can glue into the tree as well so I think that's going to be an awesome idea and oh I'm getting really creative guys okay so I think a fun idea granted right now like um we're on a tight budget because we have some huge financial uh purchases coming up but if I can figure out I think I already figured it out I'm going to create a larger tree on the wall and here's what we're going to do we're going to build onto it every single week so I'm going to have the tree trunk up we're going to add leaves to it we're going to add the bird's nest to it over time we'll add eggs to it okay I'm getting really excited about this now so I will be building that on the wall so almost like a bulletin board like you would see in a school but it's just going to be on our wall I don't have a do I have a bulletin board I have a small bulletin board maybe I can use it we'll see but anyways okay so let me uh I'm gonna write bulletin board and I'll know what I mean by that so obviously we have two nature walks already built in granted I'm not drive getting in my car and driving to the nearest park like we don't necessarily live close to parks because we live in the city but we can go on a nature walk around our own neighborhood um, and use what we find fallen from the trees in our own environment so I think that would be a great thing to do I think that this is also a good time to work on building a um, bird nest to do outside since we're learning about bird habitat so on day three we are going to build a bird nest and I'm not sure if I want to put them outside we we have a garden and if I invite birds it's just gonna be bad uh, maybe we'll hang them outside in the front of the house hopefully that'll keep them away from the back so yes on day three we're going to build a bird nest still figuring out day four so while I'm figuring out day four um, I do want to also say that as you guys know we also do sensory play the sensory bin does have the bird food in there we do sensory play usually in between reading and math because uh, she usually needs a break in between the two I don't think it's fair to ever do 20 minutes of reading and 20 minutes of math back to back like I said the attention span is just not there so I'm also going to write continue continue um, sensory 
and you guys know I plan to add on to it as we go, which I didn't get to do much of considering the curriculum wasn't working for us. So now I actually can do that. And I talk about in that building, building around a lesson plan, I explain what I mean by that. So feel free to watch that to get an idea of what I mean. Okay, so now we have circle time, we have reading, we have our sensory play, our math, and then our, we have our science. And science is everything I'm talking about and art is built in obviously with the science that we're learning. I think on that fourth day, we're gonna do the bird sweep activity. Uh, which you will see in a future video. It's kind of hard to explain. I did explain it in that other video I keep referring to, but uh, Bird Sweep will be on that day. And honestly, I think they'll like Bird Sweep so much they're probably going to ask me to continue doing that. Okay, so we have our circle time, our reading, our math, our science, our art. And I think for writing, we're just going to work on uh, different words each day that have to do with birds that are on her reading level. She understands short vowels. She can do up to five sometimes six letter words. She understands consonant teams like uh, CH, SH, things like that. So there are plenty of words I can figure out and we will do different things like the word game on the dry erase board, the C trace spell activities. We're gonna do some C trace spell games. Okay, so C trace spell, we will do that every day as I come up with stuff. Okay, so that is my lesson plan you guys for these four days. I still, like I said, it's still the beginning of the year and our curriculum wasn't working the best. So I still want to keep it pretty simple. So now let's do our fun day Friday. So fun day is we will probably, um, I'm going to write circle time because it just depends. They love doing circle time guys. Absolutely love circle time. We may start with that, but that's a day of a lot of fun, but we will do the dry erase game. Wow. That was a really bad why. It's like my hand jerks when I write dry erase game and we will also make sure that we get some bird watching in now on friday none of these are going to be in order like we just do them as we want to do honestly um so we got circle time dry erase game which is her reading for the day bird watching is her science i think for spelling i think i'm going to create a game where i'll give her a picture and she has to spell it out so i'm gonna call it spell the picture i don't know what to call it <laughs> So I'm going to print out some things and create that game because I just thought of it in my head. It's nothing special. I'm sure someone's thought of it, but basically like I would show a picture of uh, a nest and then I would have a whole bunch of letters and she would have to be able to spell out n s t. Those are sounds that she knows so she can spell nest. So that's what we're going to do. I was going to show you guys all four weeks in this video, but I'm not. I'm not. That's going to be way too long. I mean, we're already at 20 minutes. So maybe I'll do a week by week and show you guys, but I just wanted to give you the idea of how we're going to plan going forward considering we dropped that curriculum. This is also when we do a ton more block play. And yes, I know it looks like I'm forgetting Savannah and all this. Savannah is still not showing much interest in like learning outside of play, to be honest. And that's fine. She's two. So for her, I'm not putting as much weight. We do go over her stuff in circle time. So she's learning her shape and her color of the week. She also does uh, alphabet letter of the week and uh, number of the week. So that's how we're teaching her. She does not show much interest guys. She's into crafts. She's hands on. She loves her crafts and she'll be a part of that and she'll audibly listen to me. But honestly, she has no desire to sit down and learn and I'm not going to force it. So um, in the future, you'll see me creating a lot of learn through play activities for her. And hopefully that'll help you guys out as well with ideas if you have a kid who's just not ready to sit down and learn which is totally normal by the way and um yeah hopefully i can help you guys in that way and then outside of that it's just gonna be for us to play 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 so it's not going to be heavy at all they get into the things they want to get into in here i don't put a lot of pressure on that fun day it's kind of child led 100 percent on that day we're gonna end the video here i think you guys get the point so we have plenty of activities planned out. Now I just have to make my list and make sure I have everything, which I'm pretty sure I do. That's what we're going to do for this week. So this week's theme is all about their habitat. All right, I need it in this video. It's super long. I'm sorry about that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it still helps you guys understand lesson planning or giving you ideas and make sure that you hit the subscribe button before you go. And you know, I have all this homeschooling content going on. So make sure that you stick around to see what else we have going on. And the like button lets me know that this is the type of content that you enjoy. So I know what to make for you in the future. But other than that, I want you guys to have a wonderful day and have fun homeschooling. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.